the Columbia River, Oregon. A historic waterway used in the past to transport goods and navigate the Pacific Northwest. But recently, there have been sightings. Sightings of a creature thought to be older than the river itself. We're here in Oregon to solve a mystery. And the first step is to ask questions. Hey, what's up? Local guy? Yeah, that's me. Ran. Nice to meet you. I'm coming in. I'm gonna come in. Scott is a local witness. He claims to have seen the monster in the river. So tell us exactly what you saw. Yeah, it was just a normal day. I was walking my dog along the Columbia. Um, and all of a sudden, I heard this big splash. And I turned over, and it was nothing but waves and ripples. Um, and when the water finally settled, there was this big, dark up figure. How big do you think it was? Maybe about eight feet. Is this what it looks like? All right, folks, that confirms it. This is our fish of interest. Actually, now that I think about it, it might have been a white stir. With the knowledge we had just acquired, the next step was to gear up. Throughout the years catching many fish, one learns many techniques. This was something entirely new. One thing was for sure. This beast will be the fight of a lifetime. So right now I'm rigging up a larger rod with larger lines. So we gotta put these little loops around the fish so it stays flat or something something like that see put the hook at the very top there we go so the fish just sits on the bottom alright so if there is a river monster here it's going to be in these waters, Columbia River. With the bait sitting exactly where we want it, the abundance of life in this river immediately becomes clear. American Shad this time of year, millions of these fish will swim upriver from the sea to spawn. That's another good one. Almost every cast results in a bite. Using fresh bait that is natural in this environment dramatically raises the chances of landing a beast. And within minutes of switching to fresh bait, this happens. Fish on. We are hooked into a big animal. Easily Ram's biggest fish. The fish is taking massive amounts of line. It's so big, man. I just saw it. It's so big. 
The fight from the shore is very unpredictable, as the beast can get stuck or the line can easily snap. Oh my god. And then, exactly what we don't want. Oh, it's off. What happened there? I think the thing came off. This fish has eluded us today. There seems to be a strange presence in this river. An unwelcoming one. The next day is clear. And we waste no time. The shad is rigged up and now sits at the bottom of the river. It's a waiting game, and as the minutes turn into hours, there is still no bite. After this much time, the line being moved by the current is giving some false hope. This day, nothing seems to be happening, and our patience is truly being tested. During these kind of situations, I like to think of the saying my mother's father's grandson used to say, Where there is life, there is hope. We decide to move further down the river. With our heavy setup, sitting and waiting in the water once again. Ram hooks onto something very big on our lighter setup. Steelhead. A monster in its own right, this is an Andromenous form of the rainbow trout. This beautiful chrome fish makes its way from the Pacific Ocean up the Columbia River to spawn. Although this is a very big creature, the max size for this fish tops off around 40 inches, nowhere near the size of the beast that was described to us by the locals. After a long day of catching nothing, it definitely gave us a reason to smile. We let the fish go to swim another day, 
and our hunt for the beast still continues. Independence Day 2018 Everyone seems to be enjoying their day off by targeting Steelhead and Shad. We have moved to a more isolated spot down river. This is our fourth day after this beast. And as always, the Shad is rigged. The drag is set. And here we go again. Oh, I can't do nothing here. Holy shit, dude. Here we go. This, without a doubt, is the monster we have been after. Ram has a good hook set. Hopefully, everything goes right this time. I got him back. It's a push and pull. The fish is now only inches away from us. I'm gonna need you to go over there and um... Hold him? Yeah, grab him somehow. Fuck, that doesn't work for us. The Monster of the Columbia. So this is the river monster we've been going for. It has broken our line many times, taking our hooks. And finally, we're able to pull one up. White sturgeon, the largest freshwater fish in North America. All right, These well. beautiful animals are the pride of the Columbia River. They are the largest species of freshwater fish in North America. These are ancient fish with the average length being five to seven feet, they have been recorded to get up to 20 feet long. Wild folks, real wild. With our sturgeon topping off at 54 inches, we had definitely landed ourselves a pretty decent sized fish. This is a young, healthy animal. And it's amazing to think that there is a possibility it will be swimming in these waters for the next 100 years. And so ends a successful day on the Columbia River and the end to our adventure. Alrighty folks, here we are at the end of episode 9 of The Brown Life. And Ram Miro, mm -hmm. you just caught your biggest fish man, yes, how big? Sir. 54 inches. Almost as big as you. 
Dude, almost. This was the craziest time I've ever had going after a fish. I don't think we've ever spent this much time. We spent like two weeks. We spent the most amount of money on this Man, fish. I'm I'm broke, dude. Yeah. And um, we're to be honest, it was frustrating. We lost a few sturgeon and I lost my T3i camera my sister bought me about seven years ago. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. I wasn't very smart and I just let it drop in the river. But it was all worth it. Mm -hmm. It was all worth it. That was one of the greatest experiences I've ever had. And I have to say, this is coming up. This next episode is my last episode here in Oregon. And I'm going to be leaving. And what, are you excited about that? Peace.